Before the vesicant is charged into weapons, samples are taken from the buffer pots and carried to the labs in the special containers provided. When an urgent message is in need of delivery, the boy uses a bicycle, also provided, but not provided for trick cycling. In any type of factory, this fooling might lead to trouble. In this type of factory, it's a positive menace. Without hesitation, action must be taken. The hair is contaminated and the eye has been splashed. Treatment to the eye must come first. Every second counts. Get rid of those contaminated skins, but most important of all, get that man away for treatment. Strip him down and ring the alarm bell. Don't bother about your boots. Get him out of the stretcher. His eyesight must be saved. From the moment the eyes are irrigated with saline water, the chances of permanent injury become less. The cleanser arrives, complete with emergency clothing, towels, soap, rubber boots, spare respirator, and ointment. Precious seconds have been saved by prompt action, and now the specialist takes over. A thorough irrigation is needed. It's important that a jet of saline water is directed well into the eye. This will avoid the possibility of washing contamination from the face into the eye. Important, too, is the position of the head to ensure that the stream of water flows from the eye, carrying with it the contaminated matter. With the eye treatment in the capable hands of the cleanser, the second man, armed with the bleach cream, attacks the hair contamination. It is not sufficient just to coat the hair with bleach. It must be well rubbed into the head. That is the reason bleach cream is used in preference to ointment. Ointment, because of its greasy nature, tends to mat the hair, so preventing the decontaminants from reaching the scalp. The greatest care must be taken to avoid the bleach cream getting into the eyes, the mouth, or the ears. Bleach in the ear is particularly harmful. While the cleanser continues the 10 to 20 minute eye irrigation, the helper prepares to apply ointment to the face. He must pay special attention to the ears and the lobe to all the crevices of the face, not forgetting such places as frowns, nose folds, or double chins. He applies ointment to the body, which may or may not be contaminated, but no chances are taken. During the last few moments of eye irrigation, the body is thoroughly treated both front and back. Satisfied all danger to the eye has passed, the cleanser examines the ears for absence of bleach and presence of ointment. Care of the ears is vital, and the man under treatment must be instructed to place a finger into each ear whilst the hair rinsing is in progress. This precaution ensures that the ears are protected from the bleach water as it runs from the hair. Rinsing is carried out by the use of a portable spray while the man remains in the prone position. If the hair is rinsed under a shower, the bleach will run down the face and all the good work will be undone. The task of both cleanser and helper is finished. The final stages are personal. Well lathering the soap over the body, the treated man enjoys a refreshing shower, after which, none the worse, and dressed in the emergency clothing brought by the cleanser, he will report to the medical station for inspection and recording of all details. Now, just a word as to the cause of that accident and how such things can be prevented. They could be prevented by reading and acting upon instructions. Stop before proceeding on main road. To cyclists, the instruction could be better. Stop and look before proceeding round a corner. There may be danger ahead. Look further than your nose and you'll see others' point of view.